Well, here we are. Um, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. And um, yeah, so another one of those real basic videos of like, you know, what to call the playlist maybe, what it's like to be an apprentice. So I've done cutting off a piece of wood square and kind of how you get in the vibe for that and the kind of things you, you want to do. Now, just to be clear, this is not my hammer of choice, the Roughneck, all right? Um, I picked that one up because it's one that I keep hanging around at home because if you want to take something out into the garden or just a bit of random DIY, something like that's fine. Um, this is something I would use in my toolbox here at home. Um, it's a it's pretty heavy weight and the more you use hammers, the more you'll decide on different weights, but that's a, a 16 ounce Warrington pattern. I think it's called, I'm pretty sure. There's obviously a claw um, and that's only 16 ounce, which for me, again, if, if there's any framing carpenters or chippies watching this or sight guys, I'm not a sight guy. So, um, you know, go easy with me. Um, but yeah, I would normally have a 20 ounce because you can actually drive something, stuff like this almost bounces off. Um, but the great thing about this for me is, you know, top of a nail is quite small and you need to hit it with a hammer consistently. That is such a good way to build up control for dealing with your chisels. Because if you compare the size of a chisel with the size of a nail, you've got a hell of a lot more space to hit on there. And when you're using a chisel, you're not looking at the end of it, you're looking at where you're working. So as much as some of these basic skills don't seem remarkable, to be able to focus on your work and just move your hand down and to concentrate on where your cutting edge is and you're just working on that chisel, that's so good. And, you know, I think getting this bit of time with a hammer can help you build that it, it's kind of what I did it doesn't mean that it's right for you you know it doesn't have to be no I can remember when I first started out and one of the things you kind of I've kind of felt that I was learning was that you know how how much crack for a better script how much effort you put in with a hammer I can remember driving my dad crazy um I was, my job was, it was, I must have been pretty young because all the um, skirting, I think different parts of the world, they call it baseboard, um, had been nailed in and I had to punch in the brads. Um, so I had a nail punch and a hammer. So the nail is already seated, it's in there and all you've got to do is punch them below the surface. But you can't just, you know, tap, 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 tap. You've got to give it quite a good crack so you know it's actually driven home. Um, and I couldn't seem to get the knack of it. It was like, you're, you're panicky, you're focused, you're trying to get that nail punch on there, you're trying to swing a hammer with a punch and then crack and just drive it below, all in one clean movement. And, you know, the building was, it was an empty space, obviously there's no carpet, it's all been freshly skimmed out, um, just chipboard flooring was down, so the noise was echoing like crazy. And it was just like me, like bang, 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 bang. And not surprisingly, it drove him mental. So he comes in, he goes, right, like this, bang, bang. And it's just like the crisp, sharp snap. And those brads just went below the surface. And then you redouble your efforts. You go back in and you have another go at it. And then you feel that kind of moment where it's like you hit it crisply enough with a nail just releases in the timber and it drives down that bit further and you, you, your body soaks up that knowledge it's not something you can it's not a copy and paste bit of information it's something you learn by feel and that's what's so fun by woodworking I swear it's why a lot of hands-on crafts have become more popular um so yeah if you were interested in that last video you're cutting off some bits of wood you know with some of those off cuts if you've got them hanging around Pick up some nails. Don't go crazy. You know, I've picked up three inch nails. That's a bit of a challenge, but it's not like four inch or six inch. I can remember going for six inch and with a 20 ounce hammer, that's pretty hard going. Um, 
but driving one of those in is good practice. Now, you're going to want to wear safety specs. I know it's not cool, and probably a lot of slight carpenters will probably laugh at that, especially if you're um, practicing at home. If you don't hit one of those square and it flies off and it gets up in your eye, you know, you, you do want to wear eye protection, in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's a very strong recommendation. In fact, I'm telling you, you want to wear your eye protection. Um, so, yeah, you might already have a decent claw hammer at home. And, yes, that isn't a what I would classify as what a professional would choose. Um, I now use, again, a lot of people might think it's a bit too primitive. I've got a Stanley Steel Master because it's pretty affordable. But I also did used to have a um, blue-handled S-Twing. Um, again, they're just good all-round hammers for claw, claw hammer work. But for like more of a toolbox one, I like the one with the wooden handles. But this one was just eBay purchase or um, Amazon. It was like, wow, you could buy a hammer that cheaply. And it's shaped quite nicely. It's no different than some of the old hammers. It's just like the old hammers quite often get a bit loose around the top. And it's good to know that the head of the hammer is there nice and tight. Now, sometimes what you'll find with a hammer is that um, if you get a bit of slip where the, the hammer feels like it wants to slip off the head of the nail, you just have to clean up the head of your hammer and just abrade it and clean it up. Now, I can't imagine there is a situation, but anybody who's looked into the world of sharpening, my God, that is a nest of vipers. I don't know if there's a grit suggestion, but most people I always worked with, it was a case of there's just a bit of sandpaper. You just rub your hammer on it. it you know, luckily you've got some in your pocket and you just use it. Um, and then you're just going to get a feel for it, you know. And I can remember as a kid, because, you know, I remember when I was young, young. So, I mean, you're talking about ages of like 10 upwards. A hammer's heavy, so you hold it up there. And there are times where you do want to move your hand up and kind of choke the hammer a little bit. But broadly, you want to get your hand back there and the power is in the wrist for most of your work. That's where you want to get that concept. You know, to, to get that whole arm movement and really whack something, that's a bit more demolition mode. Or you really know what you're doing and you're all up in those spaces. A bit like when I talked about with the saw, it's like you practice in a way which is idealised. And then maybe your reality is, oh, I'm actually having to use a saw upside down. And eventually you just cut to the line. And it's the same with the hammer, which builds in that knowledge for the chisel. Okay, so, you know, find somewhere to support your, your timber. And get the old eye protection on. And it is important, so let's not mess about with it. It's, um, you only get one set of eyes. And I'm going to see if I can get you a reasonable shot. And again, you'll probably see similarities with what we've done with other things. But in the same way where you start a saw, um, you don't just smash the saw into it. Just start the nail. Okay, so you don't want to slip off and hurt yourself. But it's, it's now started. And you just drive it through and stop. And I can feel that I've created a bit of a depression there. That's okay, it's, it's bound up those two bits of timber nice and tight. All right, so that's good. But you don't want to keep smashing the hell out of it because it's just going to like it's got hammer rash on it and that's not particularly attractive. Um, and when I'm thinking about doing this, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm really thinking of hitting the top but carrying that force down and, and really concentrating on that energy going right down to the bottom of the nail. Again, I, with the advent of nail guns these days, it's not often um, I use a hammer and wire nails for anything. Um, my work is much more a joinery workshop, so forgive me, any professional chippies and site carpenters that are watching this. But you'll also get a bit of a knowledge if you're completely new to this. You know, this timber is painted so I can't see too much, but I can see there's a knot there. And, you, you know, you want to avoid those kind of things. So that timber is going to be super hard. OK, 
Yeah, it's not, don't force yourself. I'll see if I can get in a bit of a different shot so you can see my my arm and elbow working a bit. That was a nice one. I'll come in and look at that one. That's like creamy. And you, when it goes in, you'll sometimes feel how the grain will grab it a bit and just move, but you kind of compensate for that. I'll say that, I'll probably bend this one now. Oh, that's good as well. Managed to get my eye in on the end. We'll zoom in and take a look. So you'll be surprised and, you know, fill your boots. You've bought some, you've bought some nails there. Fill the wood, you know, nail it all up. If you want, you could even, you know, look at what happens with timber when you drive a nail in at the end, which I think we all know what's going to happen. It's going to probably split. There we go. In interesting, there must be a knot there because it's split out there. But this one, it hasn't split it, which is surprising. I know a wire won't split it the same as a, as a cut will, but... You know, you just get a feel for it. And when you can use a hammer confidently, that will really help with using a chisel. If you can use nails, you can use a chisel quite easily. So I'll just bring you down and you can take a look at this a bit closer. You can see that's where I've, on that end where I was trying to split it, but it wouldn't. And I actually split the one below. Um, that one's not bad. Not so nice, bit hammer rashy. That one is, I wish I could show you that because when you catch them just right with a nail, and again, this is how sad it can be, but how satisfying it is, you get it and the energy you've done it, the nail is below the surface and you haven't got hammer rash. It feels so satisfying. That one is the same, just below, not as good as that one, but it's it's still just below. And that one as well, it's just below, maybe slightly higher there, but you can see just, just below, just below that one. Oh, so good. Maybe there's a suggestion of a hammer mark just around the edge. But remember with a the hammer, they are rounded on their um, face there. So that's the whole way. If you can time it just right, you don't need to put in that big old ugly mark. And to be fair, you know, if you're using it in stud work and joist, it's not going to matter, but... If you're building up that skills for other things, it's being critical of what you're doing and thinking, right, can I just dial that back a little bit and experiment? And it seems ridiculous, but I, I think it's a good way to learn. If you can cut wood to length and use a hammer and nail, that's a lot of skill that your body's just soaked up. And I think it's going to put you in really good stead. But cheap nails, safety glasses, and, you know, use, use the energy properly. Um, make sure that we're concentrating on the energy coming from here in the wrist. And again, everyone's technique's different. Yours will be your own. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed that. And um, I'm sure pretty soon we'll get onto something a bit more fun and I'll actually make something for you. And um, it'll be something basic because it's been a long time since I've filmed myself making anything. But um, yeah, thanks for stopping by and um, we'll catch up soon.